Hi, and welcome back to part one of a, um, kind of a game where you can use swords and bows and arrows to fight bad guys, and it's a platformer, so you're gonna need the platformer script, um, that we made earlier, um, I think parts one through six is what I've done so far, so, uh, if I've made any, like, part seven or something, you don't need those parts, um, and I don't actually know if that will break it, so I would probably recommend just using parts one through six, because I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do in part seven. Uh, but once you do that, you can create a new sprite with a terrible sword I made <laughs> that looks like this. Um, and you're going to point it to the right. That's pretty important. Um, and just make a new sprite like that. You can call it sword. Now, another glitch when I was recording this before and testing it is you do not want to have any of these outlines black. Because when they're black, your guy right now is sensing to see what color is black. So you're going to get stuck in the air. When the sword, when you move the sword, and attack with the sword. So, let's do this. When flag clicked, hide because you don't want it to be showing right away. And then forever, be sensing to see if um, the key space is pressed. We can use the space key, but you can use whatever you want um, to use the sword. And we're gonna show the sword. Um, so now, when the key space press, you're gonna show the sword. So. This basically makes it, if you just want to see, you're just here. When you click space, the sword just appears. Um, so, yeah. Then, we're going to uh, point in direction 90. Um, but you don't want to point in direction 90. You're going to point in 0. Um, because you made the sword pointing to the right. So, when you point in direction 0, it's moving right up at the top. Very top. Like that. And we're going to make it come down to the bottom. So then we're going to repeat. Um, let's go 9. We're going to move to the right. 20. Let's see what happens there. Now when we move, we go bam. The sword turns like that. That's pretty good. Um, but there was a very important glitch. It's not going to the player. So that's very simple. You're just going to say go to player. Uh, wait, where's the go to player? Go to. Not random position, but player. Now when I'm moving, it goes to my sword. But still, it's not working because it only goes there once. You want it to go there every single time <clears throat> that's turning. So add that right inside that loop. Now it's working better, but there is still a glitch. At the end, we want it to hide. And that's the main glitch. There are many glitches, though. So there we go. Uh, there are definitely many glitches. Uh, one of which is when I'm moving in this direction, the sword comes out like that, which I like. Um, but when I go this direction, it's kind of doing kind of an underdog. I don't want it to do that. I want it to move. So, like, if you don't understand, if I'm moving this direction, I press space. It's moving this direction. But when I move this direction, it still moves in that direction. It doesn't attack, like, over here like I want it to. How do we know which direction the player is facing, though, so we can know where which way the sword to go is? Well, we can use the variable of the player. Um, Xvel. And that is what we can use. Um... Sorry, I made, when I was doing this before, I made a very original X. That was the other way of doing this, but you don't need the original X because I'm not going to do that. Okay. So, how do you get the variable from the player when it's a for the sprite only? So, you can't get it here. Well, if you go to sensing, there's a block here that's pretty useful. It's something of something. They're both drop-down minions, um, so it doesn't matter it's backdrop number of stage. You can actually get... Um, of player you can get the um you can get the x position of the player the y position the direction costume number or costume name um size volume or any of the variables for the sprite only for them and that would be x and y -fell. we want x -fell. now this tells us that variable that they have and if it's negative it's moving to the left no matter what negative number it is and if it's positive it's moving to the right so, you're going to say, if, or you're going to have an if-else, actually. 
you're going to have an if here. Make sure this height is at the end of it. Um, and we're going to have a greater than in there. We're going to say if the y values, uh, x value, I mean, is greater than zero, um, that means that it is moving to the right. Then we're going to do this. But if it's not greater than zero, then we're going to do the same thing, but it's going to move negative 20 degrees. So it's moving in the opposite direction. Now this should work. If I'm moving here, then it goes like that. But if I move in the other direction, it moves like that. Yes, exactly what I want. But what if, see, I want it to move when I'm moving this direction, I want it to do that. But now if I completely stop, will it move? So I'm doing that now. If I go to the player, or I can just copy this and see what number it is right now. Hmm. So it seems to be working actually better than I thought. Yeah, it's working. Uh, that is good. But there are still some more glitches. Now, one of the glitches is kind of simple. Like, the sword is right on top of me. That's not going to do much damage because there's, like, the sword's, like, the barely the tip is coming out of the player. Well, if we're moving in this direction, we want the sword to be more out on this side. But if we're moving other direction, we want it to be more on this side. So, originally, we're going to the player. But we can change the X by 10 whenever we want. We can change the X by 10 here. Change it by minus 10. Minus 10 here, and that should be a little bit better. No, that did not work. That was not better. Um, oh, 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 oh. Okay, sorry, that was kind of weird. Oh, oh, oh. Um, we're going to the player right here, so we may be changing by x right away, but then we keep going to the player. So, not only do we want to have it there, we want to actually have it inside of here, right? Not before, after the go to player. You can have it there or there, but, it, or like, can have it here or here, but not here. Not above the player. Um, because then it would change and then it would change the player. And after a loop, it waits a tiny bit of time. So, I'll leave that to you to understand. Um,. Yeah, I can know. I notice it is working, but it's not working enough. So I'm gonna go um, twenty minus twenty. Yeah, there we go. It works a little bit better. He's like kind of attacking like that. That works better, much much better. Yes, that works much better, but not absolutely good. I, I mean, that's about all that we have in this video. I mean, you can change it more here and here to make it go farther out and lesser out. Um, but this is just kind of a simple script we did for the sword. We don't have any bad guys or the bow and arrow yet. Um, uh, we can do the bad guys next time. Maybe we'll do the bow and arrow. Yeah. We, yeah. We'll just start with the... Uh, so, I don't know what we'll do next time, but it'll show in the title, so... See you there, and thank you for watching. Please remember to subscribe.